On Koshy's Business Builders, a flame and easy way to get your business online, Ray Ma takes us through the process. How a regional guitar business fine-tuned its approach to become a global e-commerce success. And fast solutions to staffing. Our expert reveals an easy way to avoid the stress. Hello and welcome to Koshi's Business Builders. You know, I shake my head when I hear that 65% of small businesses don't have a website. In today's digital world, there's simply no excuse for not being online. It's not that hard, really. You don't need the help of some confusing tech geek and it's not as expensive as you think. Today, we're gonna show you how, with the help of veteran actor Ray Ma. Flame and heck, if he can do it, so can you. We're on Sydney's pristine northern beaches where a familiar figure marches up the sand. Stepping away from his day job as the iconic Alf on the hit TV series Home and Away, Ray Maher explains how easy it was for him to set up a website for his new business. Expert Tara Comerford from GoDaddy helped Ray through the process. So, Ray, you're one of Australia's most well-loved Australian actors, but now you're starting to become an entrepreneur with your new Ray's Flame and Hot Sauce. Tell us about the experience. I can remember loving hot sauce as a kid. In the Australian bush, I, I grew up in Western Queensland and used to go out mustering with my older brothers. And um, in the morning, this is 60 years ago, mind you, there'd be a couple of rudimentary slabs of white bread cut and a bit of mutton in the middle. and. If you didn't do something to it, by the time you pulled up for lunch, that'd be very dry. So, you know, as true connoisseurs and, and uh, um, you know, budding chefs, we used to smother it with Holbrook's um, Worcestershire sauce. And as I got older, I graduated to chilli sauce. So that's where the love of hot sauce came from. And then where did it go from there? So we thought, taking my day job into consideration, that Ray's Flame and Hot Sauce seemed like a, a good idea. So we started with the name and then went to work on producing this magnificent product that you see before you today. So how did you come up with the perfect balance? I mean, what, what are the ingredients? And was it through mates at the barbecue? There are a number of very special ingredients and, and, and the final product grew by tasting various combinations and permutations of these. And that combination is now locked in a vault in Geneva. Okay? Believe that, you'll believe anything, but it's a very secret recipe. <laughs> Look, once I had the sauce, uh, I thought I'd made it, but the sauce isn't much good unless other people know about it. And, you know, from talking to people, uh, the best way to get out there now is online. However, 60% of Australian small businesses aren't online. Why is it so important that they are online? Because their customers are online. We know that 68% of people are shopping online. They're doing banking, they're doing online sales, they're looking for products and services. So you need to be where they are. What's preventing them from going online? Yeah, our research is suggesting there's three key things from blocking them from getting online. The first is technical capabilities. They believe that you need to have coding experience to get online and it's a really complicated process. The second is the time it takes. We know small business owners are incredibly busy, they wear a number of hats. And then the third reason is cost. Um, there's a misconception that it takes a lot of money to get a small business online in terms of building a website, but we really want to take to market a message that disproves this, that it's really easy, it's free, and you don't need any technical expertise to do so. How did you find the process? <laughs> I'm not exactly the most tech-savvy bloke on the planet, so when I saw the website builder offer, which was a free website, you know, build your own website and then you've got free use for uh, 30 days, I sort of thought, well, what can go wrong there? The only thing that could go wrong for me is building the website, going onto one of those computer things. So that was the most frightening aspect. After the break, the things you need to think about when it comes to content on your new website. That's next. With the life expectancy increasing and the average retirement age steadily rising, the Australian entrepreneur is becoming ageless. Technology, new careers and more choice and opportunities mean many baby boomer entrepreneurs can now start a second career. In fact, according to data, four out of five Aussies over 40 are feeling the pressure to look for additional streams of income as they look towards retirement. 
The research also reveals almost 20% of these older non-entrepreneurs say they're likely to start their own business in the next 12 months, while 36% are likely to do so in the next five years. This growing trend is also being driven by a need to provide for their families. 75% saying they're feeling pressure to support younger generations. So if you've had dreams of becoming your own boss, maybe it's time to start thinking about your next career move, no matter how many years you've already chalked up. Hi, I'm Clinton Taylor from Taylor's Wines. We've just been awarded the world's most awarded winery for 2017, and we're proud to be associated with Koshy's Business Builders Campaign for Optimism. And there's never been a better time to be in business. Welcome back to Koshy's Business Builders. Today, we're showing you just how easy it is to build a website for your business. Startup entrepreneur and actor, Ray Ma is our guinea pig to show that you don't need to be a tech guru to get it done. Ray Ma has spent years perfecting the recipe for his beloved flaming hot sauce, but it's taken him literally minutes to build the website he needs to market it to the world. Tara Comerford from GoDaddy is giving Ray some pointers about content for his new site. What information should a small business put on their website? What are the, what are the consumers looking for when they go to a website, apart from just the product? Well, there's a few things that a small business should be doing with their website. And first of all, that's making sure that it's functional, um, that it's clean um, in terms of its design, and it's really easy for someone to navigate once they do hit their front of sight. Um, small details like having their contact information visible, making sure it's mobile optimised, um, thinking about SEO as well is really important. So when they build their website, they're thinking about the customer. Now I understand exactly what you said, apart from that bit where you swore at me and said, SEO, what is that? So that's search engine optimization. Oh, of course it is. <laughs> <laughs> right. Can you explain what that is? So search engine optimization is really important for a small business's website. They want to be thinking about some of the buzzwords that are really going to attract their customers to their site. So when they're building their website, they should be thinking about, first of all, their domain name, because their domain name has got to reflect who they are as a business and make sure that when people are searching for them on Google or other search engines, people can find them readily. I'm still amazed at how easy it was for me to get online. Because it was such a simple process for me, and I'm no expert, I'd like you, the expert, to show everybody out there who's interested on getting online just how easy it is. Happy to take you through it. So all a small business needs to do is they come onto GoDaddy, they type in a topic that they're interested in. Let's say it's a small business owner who is starting up a coffee shop. They would type in cafe, and our smart learning system would simply aggregate all of the images through our partnership with Getty Image and they would simply build the website for them. So this is what it looks like. Uh, it's really, really easy. If you want to expand on any of these things, you do it. Yes. And if you don't, you move on to the next section of setting up the site. Have I become an expert in 20 minutes? You have. <laughs> <laughs> so there you have it. I hope we've busted a few myths today. If you don't have a website for your business, buy one off the shelf from a website builder. There are plenty of choices out there and get one done, it's as simple as that. And then you need to make sure your content is relevant to your customers and use well thought out SEOs to ensure your business makes it to the top of the search engine list like on Google. All right, now for our Pillars of Success segment and Claire McKay is back to talk about succession planning. This week's pillar of success is exiting your successful business. Passionate business owners don't often think about leaving their business, but circumstances change. So understanding the key issues earlier and implementing some basic strategies now helps whether your exit is planned or not. First step is to know how much your business is really worth. Consider getting regular external valuations to understand what a third party would actually pay for your business. If you have business partners, then having mutual buy-sell agreements with underlying insurance can enable the remaining partners to buy your share of the business from your family should you pass away. This provides certainty and financial security 
to both your business partners and your family. Most business owners have very low cost basis for their business, so capital gains tax on sale can be significant. There may be tax incentives to help reduce your tax bill. However, these rules are complex, so make sure you get advice before you sign the documentation to sell your business. Another trap for business owners on sale is they don't have a plan for what's next. Successful business owners can be so consumed by building their business that once it's gone, it can take a while to find their groove, both financially and emotionally. Having goals and a plan for the next exciting adventure in your life can make the transition out of your business that much smoother. Some great advice from Claire McKay there. Succession planning is so important, especially if you're like me and have a family business to run. After the break, how a bricks and mortar guitar shop became an online sensation, developing a unique system to overcome customer fears. Hi, my name is Mick Dempsey. I founded a business called Easy Debit in 1999 and had an exit in 2014 to an American company called Global Payments. It's one of my three top tips for businesses. Probably the first and most important is that every business needs a cause, needs a why you exist. At Easy Debit, our cause was every business deserves to be paid. So it's really important that business has a cause so that everyone, all your employees can rally around that cause. So my number two tip is all about people. You have to have good people around you to have a successful business. The secret of good people is to have a, a very good selection process and you have to have people who are on board with the cause. So my third tip is to get to break even as soon as possible. So what does break even mean? It's quite simple. It means that your revenue equals your expenses. I find these days too many people don't concentrate on revenue, their expenses blow out and they're always looking for cash. And that's it, my three top tips for successful entrepreneurs. Now to a traditional bricks and mortar business that recently decided to go online. Port Mac Guitars from Port Macquarie has been operating since 2004, but recently they came up with a plan to encourage more customers to buy guitars online without touching them. It was a brilliant idea that's transformed this business from a small town store to an e-commerce superstar. Here's Rob Mestry. So when we first opened the business, it was a traditional bricks and mortar business. Um, we basically opened the doors in the morning and waited for customers to come in and we serviced those customers. Uh, as things started to change with the advent of the internet into uh, you know, e-commerce, basically we saw the writing on the wall. It took some time to realise that, but it became obvious to us that the current business that we had just wasn't going to exist in five years' time. So it was about five or so years ago that we uh, launched our e-commerce store and from that point on, we saw some dramatic changes. I think actually buying a guitar online is one of the hardest things for people to commit to. Guitarists are very touchy-feely with instruments and some of them will say, I will never buy a guitar online. But as you know, the generations change, people are going to get used to that concept. What we do is try and bridge those distances. So when we present the items, they're individually photographed. Uh, they can request a personalised uh, video demonstration to be sent to them. And we do a lot of policies which just ease all those fears that distance can create. So if they're unhappy with a guitar, um, we'll return it within 30 days and we'll pay the costs associated with the return as well. And no one else in our industry wants to even touch that sort of policy. But we're quite happy to do it. We developed a process called the Genius Guitar Enhancement System. Uh, we developed that about a year ago and it's a series of about 34 steps which we optimise the guitars before they go out to the customers. And more recently, we bought a uh, quite an expensive piece of machinery from Germany, which we uh, worked into that system. It's called a Plec machine. It's a computer-controlled device that allows us to do really exacting modifications to guitars. And uh, we're the only retail store in Australia to have one. In actual percentages, it's well over 50%. Yeah, are buying um, online from us. And in our industry, and actually most uh, retail, that's a staggering number. We have quite a large following on Facebook, currently about 30,000 followers, uh, which puts us up in the, in the top sort of, I think, five or so stalls in Australia. I think we're on the, the right path with what we're doing, so we just want to see some consistent growth. Um, we're happy with the environment that we're in. We're happy with uh, dealing with the Australian 
the public. We're not really that interested in global at this stage. But yeah, we just want to reach more people that maybe weren't that interested in buying online and just uh, show them that that's a, it's a really good option nowadays. Look, I just love it. When traditional bricks and mortar businesses break the mould, think laterally and make the digital leap. It can pay off big time. Time for a break, but after that, we solve a staffing problem for a clothing warehouse. Artificial intelligence is one of those buzzwords that just keeps popping up. But what is it exactly, and how can it help your small business? Well, also referred to as machine learning, AI is software that has the ability to learn, and it's usually by analyzing very large sets of data. On the business front, AI can help reduce your customer support workload through automation. Digital Genius, for example, is an online service that plugs into Zendesk and Salesforce and can learn from your previous customer support cases. It includes a text-based chatbot to interact with customers in everyday English, then to collect information and, based on its degree of understanding, either present specific solutions or forwards the query on to real support staff. AI-powered platforms such as Acquisio can optimize your marketing across multiple channels such as AdWords and Facebook. These can analyze real-time advertising performance incredibly quickly and make informed recommendations about the best ways to spend your pay-per-click budget. MonkeyLearn is also a clever way to turn tweets, emails, documents, and web pages into actionable data. So in summary, AI cuts time, staff costs, and provides new insights that might go unnoticed to give your business that competitive edge. Time now for Ask Koshia. This week, a clothing business got in touch wanting to know how they can manage the fluctuations in orders when it comes to staffing. Hi, I'm Kerry, co-owner and founder of Harlow, an Australian-made designer label that caters for women sizes 12 to 26. We operate from our studio in Brunswick, Victoria, with two full-timers being myself and my husband, Angelo, as well as a part-timer that comes in two half days a week. Our online orders can fluctuate from an average of 250 to 500 a month in a new season launch. As a startup going through a growth phase, we are not quite ready to take on additional permanent staff, so we often end up working way too many hours ourselves to get it done. Do you have a short-term solution for staffing when it comes to those busy periods? Any help would be appreciated. Thanks, David. Kerry, thanks for your question. It is a challenge many startups face, finding temporary workers who are reliable can be a full-time job in itself and comes with all sorts of responsibilities, as we know. So Australia Post has partnered with Workfast to make your life carry a whole lot easier. Rebecca Burrows from Australia Post is here to tell us about it. Rebecca, thanks for joining us again. Terrific. Um, how does this work? So finding temporary staff is absolutely one of the pain points for small business. And so we've tried to make it really easy through our partnership with Workfast. And really it's just a couple of clicks away. So um, if you just go to our website, ozpost.com.au slash workfast, you really just fill in a really simple online form and we'll call you back quickly to get the ball rolling. Okay, so how can Kerry be sure she is getting the right worker for her business? So what will happen is it's, a dedicated account manager from Workfast will actually give her a call and have a bit of a chat about her business, her needs, what she's looking for in somebody. And then they've got a big pool of uh, temporary staff really waiting to go. So they're then able to source a candidate from that pool. Right. Um, they can offer training, they can do police checks, they can get them totally ready to hit the ground running uh, when they turn up to, to help out. So they become sort of like your human resource department, your Absolutely. recruitment area. What is <laughs> Um, uh, speaking from experience as a small business owner, what if you get a dud one? Look, what happens? Once in a while, those things happen. So we have, um, we want to make that really easy. So we've created a um, satisfaction guarantee. So um, if on the day somebody turns up and within a couple of hours, you know that they're not going to be suitable. If you give us a call within two hours of them turning up, 100% uh, money back. Wow, that sounds really fair. That's extraordinary. So how much will this Workfast service cost Kerry to actually set up? 
So the great thing is WorkFast will also take care of things like superannuation, the administration, the payroll. So that removes that kind of admin burden. And then in terms of how much it costs, um, it really varies based on the industry that you're in, how much work you need, how much is fluctuating and the location. But to give you a bit of an indication... And that's fair enough, because yeah. everyone's different. Absolutely. Yeah. But to give you a bit of an indication, uh, for Kerry, who's looking for someone working in fashion a couple of days a week based in Brunswick in Victoria, it'd be about $36 an hour for someone to come in and help her out. And you have all of that backup around you that WorkFast does for you. Absolutely, it's very flexible. That is fantastic. That is a small price to pay to get some really quality staff that's really flexible. Rebecca, thanks for explaining it to us. Pleasure. Really appreciate us. And don't forget, if you've got a question, be sure to send it in to us, kbb at pinstripemedia.com.au. I'll try and do my best to answer it for you. If not, we get the experts in to help. Next week on the show, collaborative consumption at its best. The success of a man who's renting out your camper van and how a family business is riding into the next generation. See you next week for more Koshy's Business Builders.